Hello. My name is Joe Graber, and I'm here today to work through an example problem in kinematics dealing with friction. So let's go ahead and get started. The problem that we're going to work on today has this spool, and you can uh, read the description here. The spool has a mass of 100 kilograms with a radius of gyration of k sub g equals 200 millimeters. We're going to switch over to meters and make that point too. About its center of mass, g. Uh, if a vertical force P equals 500 newtons is applied to the cable, determine the acceleration of G and the angular acceleration of the spool. The coefficient of static and kinetic friction between the rail and the spool are mu s is 0.2 and mu k is 0.5 respectively. Okay, so we're going to work through this problem. And a couple things that you might notice right away is try to, trying to figure out exactly what's happening here. You notice that there, uh, there's a force being pulled down and the spool is going to be spinning around. And as that force pulls down, we expect the spool to move this way. We expect it to word, move towards me as the inner rail, uh, the inner circle rides along that rail. Hopefully you can see that. We're going to start off as we always do. And this first video is really just going to be setting up this problem. And then we're going to move on from there to actually solving it. So to set it up, I'm going to start off with givens and finds. So we want to write all of our givens. Oh, first one I'm given, it says that we have a, uh, the mass of that spool is going to be equal to uh, one, 100 kilograms. Okay, and then we have the kg, the radius of gyration is given. Kg is equal to 0 0.2 meters. Uh, it says millimeters, I just converted it to meters. About its center of mass, g. It has a vertical force of P equals 500 newtons. And um, there's a couple other things listed there. Our mu S is equal to 0 0.2. And our mu K is equal to 0 0.15. Those are both our coefficients of static and kinetic friction. Uh, it doesn't tell us if this is slipping or not. So that's one of the big tasks of this problem is determining whether this is slipping and how that affects us. Okay, and then we're going to find... Uh, it says it wants to find the um, angular acceleration of the spool as well as the acceleration of the center of mass. So we're going to find AG. And I'm going to put a subscript X here just to remind myself that I expect the center of mass of that spool to be moving only in the X direction, not in the Y. Uh, and then I also want to find alpha, which is going to be that angular acceleration of the spool. Okay, we have our givens and find set up. We're going to hide the description of the problem so we have a little bit more room to uh, do our free body diagram and our kinetic diagram. Uh, in this first video, I just want to get the free body diagram, the kinetic diagram, and our two cases set up because we have to make some assum assumptions uh, in order to solve this problem. I'm going to start out with the free body diagram. That one doesn't work too well. Let's see, this one looks a little better. Yeah, I think you can see that one better. This is a free body diagram. I have the inner ring and the outer ring. And then I'm just going to put all of the forces. I always recommend actually tracing the model with your finger. And anywhere where something's touching it, there's going to be forces. And then you also have to add on the force for gravity. So if I Put my finger along that, I'm going to see that it's being touched on the bottom, and there's going to be a normal force coming up from there. And that normal force is being caused, of course, by the rail pushing back on the spool. And what's pushing down? Well, I'm going to have my weight, and that's going to be pushing down on the center of mass. Okay. I also have the P that's pulling down this way. Okay, I have all those forces. Now I have to think about friction. Okay, friction is a part of this problem. We know we're given a mu s and a mu k, and we have to figure out how to interpret that. Uh, the way I like to interpret friction is to think about it, what would happen if this was on ice? And how would it change since we have friction? So if you picture this spool, and it's resting on a rail right here on ice, and I were to pull, pull down with p, I think you can imagine the whole spool would just spin. And that spinning is actually causing the surface of this inner spool to slide in relationship to the rail. Friction 
will keep it from sliding. So if it was spinning, this would be trying to go like that way. Friction is opposing that motion. I'm going to put my friction in that direction. Using the idea of ice, you can, you can typically figure out which way your friction should move. I'm just going to erase that inner arrow. And now we have our free body diagram. OK, the next thing we want is we want a kinetic diagram. Kinetic diagrams are always very easy to draw because they're, they're always the same thing. We're going to draw our kinetic diagram where we are basically just putting our coordinate system onto an image of our body. So kinetic diagram. And we're going to have uh, the inner one as well. Our center of mass, we always set up our center of mass, and then we choose our coordinate system. I'm just going to use a rectangular coordinate system because we have rectangular motion. With that rectangular coordinate system, I'm going to have my x and my y, just like you, we typically do. This is my x direction. This is my y. And with the kinetic diagram, we're going to make pseudo forces in those two directions. I'm just going to go in the positive x direction and call that m a g x, mass times the acceleration of the center of mass in the x direction. I'm going to put one in the y direction as well, m a g y. And then finally, the couple moment for a kinetic diagram is uh, because of the rotation alpha, we're going to have a ig alpha. Okay, if you remember, the kinetic diagram is just a visual representation of both our kinetic and our kinematic equations. We're putting together our sum of the forces equations and our sum of the moments equations into a single equation. So now I have my kinetic diagram. I have my free body diagram, I have my kinetic diagram. The one more thing I want to get set up in this video is our cases and how we're going to use our different cases. Uh, in order to solve this problem, we have to first make an assumption. We are either going to assume slipping or assume not slipping and then check it. Uh, so I'm going to put two cases. The first one's going to be slipping, second one's going to be no slipping. So I'm just going to write down here case one. Actually, I might put this a little higher so we can use it later and still have some space. So case one, in case one, we're going to assume no slipping. OK, so I assume no slipping. What does that mean? If I assume it's not slipping, that means that I have my instantaneous center of zero velocity as a point right there. And it means that the rolling, how fast the AG goes, is directly dependent on the radius. It tells me that I can relate the linear acceleration to the angular acceleration. And how do we do that? Well, we know from kinematics that relationship is the acceleration of the center of mass of x is equal to alpha r. Okay, we know that equation because we learned it in kinematics. However, we need to be really careful about our sign. If you look at my AGX, I chose to have a positive direction going this way, even though I know the spool is actually going to, to move the other direction. I like to stick to my positive axes just for record keeping. And then in the end, if I find out it's going in the negative direction, which is what I expect, I'm happy. Okay? But notice, if I have a positive alpha, a positive spinning this way, in the positive k direction, that would cause my object to roll and move in the negative x direction. That means a positive alpha needs to make a negative agx. So I need my negative sign in here. If you prefer to do that with a cross product, you can always say uh, that uh, acceleration is going to be equal to alpha crossed with r. In this case, our alpha would be in the k direction, so we'd have alpha k crossed with our r. And what is our r? Well, it's the position of our center of mass related to the instantaneous center. So you can see it's in the positive j direction. So we'd have the position of g with respect to whatever that point is. I will call it a. And that's going to be in the j direction. We know if we cross a k and a j with our little shortcut, then um, we know we get a negative i. So there are two different ways to confirm that we expect a negative in that equation.
OK, that's our first case. We know we're going to be able to use that equation, but then we have to ha know a way to check our case. If there is no slipping, the way we're going to check our case is we're going to make sure our friction is working. How do we know friction is working? Well, we know the maximum friction that we can ever have is static friction. Remember, the friction graph looks like this. It starts, goes up, and it drops down for kinetic friction. What are the axes? Well, frictional force versus load. When we start off with, uh, if we start off with a little bit of force, friction matches us. A little bit more, friction continues to match us until we reach the peak. And at this point and this point only, we have mu s times n the um, coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So if it's not slipping, we need to be in this zone down here. And what that means is frictional force has to be less than or equal to mu s times n. And if it is, then we assume there is no, our assumption is correct that there is no slipping. Okay, that's our case one. Now we need to set up our case two. Our case two would be slipping. We have to see what would be different for that. In our case two, Slipping. Uh, you can imagine if this is pulled hard enough down with P, probably better look at the free body diagram. If P is pulled hard enough, it's going to test that friction. Can you hold up, Mr. Friction? And if you can, you're going to do no slipping. If you can't, there's going to be some slipping between those two surfaces. If there is slipping between those two surfaces, we are on this part of the graph, of the frictional graph where friction is going to be equal to mu k times n. That's our kinetic friction. So we'll know friction. We can use that as one of our equations. How do we check if we're right or not? Well, if the friction doesn't hold up, then we expect our alpha to be faster than what it would be if it was rolling along. So we can expect that our acceleration in the x direction is actually going to be less than alpha because our alphas, it's going to go ahead and slip a little bit, and our alpha is going to go faster than our AGX. OK, we have set up case one and case two. We have our free body diagram and our kinetic diagram. Our next step is to choose a case and solve it. And then we're going to do our check. The uh, if it's case one, we're going to check if friction is less than or equal to mu SN. If we choose to do case two first, we would check this. I'm going to go ahead and choose to do case one first. Then we'll do our check, and we'll see if we're right.